Hello and welcome back everyone. I'm very pleased to be interviewing Simon Mills today, who's a fabulous artist. He's part of the group of Kent artists um, contributing to the Come Eat With Me exhibition at Rochester Cathedral. And uh, I'm very excited to talk to him. You know, I get excited very quickly when I'm talking to people who are creative. And so I'm very much looking forward really to finding out a little bit about, more about Simon because we've not met, have we, Simon? No, we haven't. No, no. Very nice. I hope we will. I hope we will at the uh, cathedral. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's going to be magnificent, yes. and I like to use that word because the the venue is magnificent. Oh, of course. And yeah. from what I see of all the artwork and the contributions that are coming into the exhibition, it's going to be fabulous. And much more, and much more um, integrated. And uh, I don't know. So just so there's a lot of complexity to it. So it's. It's really interesting, fabulous. Okay, so Simon, tell me, how did you get involved with the exhibition? What, uh, what... Well, I was at Nucleus in Chatham one day uh, visiting a friend and I saw Jane first there uh, and she said, <coughs> uh, would I like to be part of a, uh, uh, a project that was going on in the cathedral? Uh, my first thought, because I'm not a Christian, was, well, it wouldn't be appropriate for me. Uh, but then as she started talking about it, uh, I got more interested. Uh, I think the thing is, you know, I've spent, well, half a century of my life uh, painting and being fascinated by uh, Western art in general. I spent lots of time in, uh, in art galleries. And you can't appreciate uh, Western art without a knowledge of Christian symbolism and Greek mythology and pagan mythology uh you know all the stories in the paintings come from uh uh all those stories so uh so i yeah and then when she said it was the um uh the leonardo last supper that the images were coming from uh, and then i got very excited because it's always been a favorite painting of mine um and uh so kind of took it from there really mm. It's, it's an iconic painting, isn't it? Every every child <laughs> painting. You don't have to be Christian to understand the the parables and the stories and and things within religions, whatever religion it is. Um, yeah. But Western culture and our society is based on Christianity and, and values, so it is quite something. Um, even if we're not knowledgeable, we have an underlying understanding of much of it. But yes. yes renaissance painting so i was intrigued as to how it would manifest and so um what do you think about this, the way it's come together so far about um, how the artists have been drawn together the quality of the art i think it's very interesting that uh by and large they're all very different takes on the subject I and mean, there are some that are very much like icons and others that are much looser uh, there's one that i saw which is very much a contemporary portrait of a contemporary person. Uh, and so I think that's very exciting. I think they'll look very uh, interesting when they're on the table. Yes, uh, great, yeah, great. And also there, there is some um, sculpture, there's the pottery. Yeah. The, yeah. Whole, yeah. The, the table, the table itself is magnificent. Have oh, you got a chance thing. to see the table? Yeah, yes. In fact, I even managed I had a conversation with a chap who owns the farm that it was dug up on. He was really? a restoration house one day. And I, yeah, and I got to talk to him. Uh, and uh, it's extraordinary. And what I think is so wonderful is that at first sight, it looks as if it's been varnished. Because it's not. It's just polished. And, it, you know, it's so black and dense. You know, you can actually see your face in it. I think it's a wonderful object. Yeah. 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 The incredible history. And uh, for those yeah. of you... Um, uh, haven't heard of the Fenwood Oak. It's um, a 5,000 year old tree amongst other trees that were naturally felled. It slipped into bog and was restored from that bog because the, the bog kept this particular tree, which is 44 feet long, is enormous. Right. If you go to the website, you'll see pictures of it. And it's just the ancientness of it. And as you say, the, the blackness, the deepness of mm. it, very, mm. very unique and unusual. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So what, what 
is your artistic journey then? You've been painting for a long time. How do you approach or how do you approach your art normally and how did you approach it for this particular um, round or as a circle? Yes. Uh, well, it was a totally different thing because what I do when I paint uh, is you know, I'm standing up uh, in my studio. Uh, I, I've always considered painting to be a bit like a dance and you move backwards and forwards towards the canvas and you know I make quite big bold brush marks um, this obviously is much smaller than a lot of the things I do uh, and I actually paint it on the tabletop um, partly because I've got uh, knee issues at the moment um, so uh, it, it was a very different way of, of actually working uh, I mean, yeah, I was, well, I went to art school uh, in the very, very, well, 1970, uh, I started. Uh, and so, you know, I've been, I've been at it for a long, long time. And I was very fortunate that a lot of the influences I had in the early days were uh, quite sort of physical painters like Frank Auerbach or Jackson Pollock or people like that. So I was very excited about the physicality of paint. Um, and I still tend to throw it around quite a lot, which mm -hmm. obviously I didn't so much with this, but I did enjoy the um, trying to keep it reasonably loose. Mm. What, what I found interesting, because uh, I think some of you watching now will know that I've contributed to this exhibition too, um, mm. was that I'm used to doing commissions, portrait artists um, doing commissions, wonderful, but it was quite a confined, defined um, expectation but freedom within that. And I fa personally found it quite interesting to s stay within the, um, there's, a, there's a uniformity of some part aspects of the paintings, all of them. And uh, that I found difficult because I like to be completely free. <laughs> yeah. But, but then sometimes to have some kind of a uh, restriction is, is a good thing. I think if you've got complete and total freedom, uh, it can be, uh, you know, it, it can sometimes be, uh, what's the word I'm after? Um, Unrained? Yeah, yes. I mean, I think... Uh, I don't you know. know. When, when you think about artists mm -hmm. in the past, uh, they almost all had to paint within certain restraints, uh, mm -hmm. whether it was working for the church or the state or you know, for individual clients. Uh, and sometimes if you've got something to fight against, uh, it can bring out more exciting things. And maybe if you, if there's nothing, if you can in complete freedom, uh, mm -hmm. you might get a bit lost. So I think, yeah, mm -hmm. having something to, to battle against might be quite good in a way. Yeah, I found it quite yeah. a, a teaching, a learning experience. And it right. did... Uh, I developed some fresh ideas as well from working within that. Good. Yeah. Who, who is your um, the personage that you have painted? Uh, which of the apostles? Mm. St. Philip. I, I chose him. In fact, I, he was in my mind uh, when Jane first mentioned the idea. It's always been my favourite figure in it. Uh, he's the one who's standing and leaning forward uh, with his head turned towards the figure of Christ and his, his lit on one side of his face. And I've always thought that, and the fact that he, you know, his neck is sort of uh, straining uh, is a really, really exciting figure. Um, so you know, I said to her, yeah, I'll, I'll do it as long as I can have Philip. <laughs> I do want to have Philip. Yeah. Uh, he's the one. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So what's um, your next step then? Are, are you able to uh, take what you've learned or developed from this particular exercise, this, this um, proposition, this fulfilment that you've achieved here, is that going to change your work in any way or are you going to go off at a tangent in any way to develop it at all? Uh, I don't know because mostly my work is landscape, you can see from the one behind me. Uh, and and uh, so, uh, I mean, I have painted figures. I've painted uh, one entire year of my life. All I did was paint portraits. Uh, and that was quite 
quite interesting. It's quite surprising to be able to, you know, to actually earn a living from from painting for a year. It's the only time I've done it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then I did various strange things, like I did a portrait of Gary Lineker for uh, what was Christmas. And, uh, I did a portrait of, um, uh, what's his name, who I, name I always forget as Lord Longford. Um, um, doesn't matter. Um, so, so, you know, I, I've done quite a lot of portrait painting, but uh, I don't do so much of that now. So I will I'll be going back to, well, I've got a commission uh, for landscape, which I should be starting on uh, pretty soon. So um, I'm not sure that this will have any impact as such, but you never know. I mean, it's always good to uh, to, to work from uh, you know another painter's work because I think you always learn something. Uh, I was talking to our grandson uh, a little while back, who was very annoyed that he had to do portraits at school. And I completely understand, and I would have been exactly the same at his age. Why have I got to copy this thing? Well, it makes no sense, it's got no meaning for me at all. But everything you do when you copy something, you learn something. I did a set for uh, a musical uh, about Picasso years ago. It was dreadful, uh, completely awful show, but that doesn't matter because the sets were just big, copies of Picasso paintings and it was huge fun yeah. but also uh, I learned a lot about the way Picasso painted he's not a huge hero of mine at all I greatly prefer Matisse in fact but uh, still it was a learning process and everything that you copy you learn something from I think. Mm, true true so this is it then it's, it's nearly upon us and uh, if you're yeah. watching this video you may have um we're approaching the exhibition and you may be watching this after the exhibition has gone on. So please do go to the website and have a look and see what you missed out on. Um, we're excited. I can tell that, the, well, you can tell as well, that the quality of the work and the approach of the artist is very serious. We've had um, an interview with um, Reverend Gordon and sort of looking at it from the, the uh, church's perspective and bringing art into the um, cathedral at Rochester. And so it's a very, there's so much for people at this exhibition, isn't there? I, I, I'm, are you aware there's music as well? There's some yes. uh, century music. That's, that's brilliant. Yes. Yeah. Such a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm really. I mean, music, music in cathedrals, you know, it's just, it's always been a wonderful thing. The acoustics uh, suit that sort of music, not other music, I don't think. But, uh, mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and it, this, there is a religious concept behind the Last Supper or under, underpinning it. And um, you said you aren't a Christian, and um, I'm just wondering if that's helped you understand Christianity any better, or have, what's your approach to Christianity during the exhibition? Uh, I'm, I'm interested in, uh, in the art. Uh, to me, all art that's been produced you know, in the name of religion, is basically a celebration of the human spirit. Uh, and, you know, that to me is the most important thing and I love it. So, uh, um, yeah, I think uh, that's what we're all doing is we're celebrating, you know, the, um, the indescribable. Um, and like you say, the human spirit, and I think, as you know, as an artist, you're expressing that. <laughs> and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what you've done and... I hope everybody comes along to the exhibition. If you haven't seen it, go to the website. Um, so thank you then, Simon. Is there anything I can um, recommend for you now? Are you looking to promote any aspect of your work at the moment? Do you have any events coming up? I've got a, uh, a show in the Fish Slab Gallery in Whitstable next April. April. Uh, should be a, a joint show with uh, Brona, my wife, and my oldest uh, college friend, Philip Richardson. So oh. looking forward to that. Um, I've just uh, had a book printed. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, which is uh, it's probably too, too long to explain what it's all about, but these are um, they're paintings of photographs of art in galleries uh, taken, the photographs were taken by my friend Gareth 
uh, in the 80s and 90s. Uh, and there's a joke in Dinos Chapman. Basically, the idea was uh, that so many uh, art shows that you see nowadays, uh, at the end of the show, the work has disappeared. Uh, I mean, for instance, the latest Turner Prize winner, her work, uh, you know, shopping trolleys and traffic cones and things, will be gone at the end of the show. The only record of it will be photographs. And Gareth and I said, you know, if these photographs are uh, all that's left of the work, are the photographs works of art? Because that's all there is. If they are, what if a painter painted a painting of a of that photograph, would that be a work of art? And okay. if it is, then who's the artist? And we were just asking the question, we didn't want answers, we weren't suggesting there were answers, but the idea was semi-humorous, uh, but also just questioning uh, uh, you know, the authorship uh, of art. So um, this, this show, the paintings are, five foot by four foot from five inch by four inch transparencies. We've had them on the wall a couple of times. I now want to get them somewhere rather more prestigious. So mm. the book is to take round to galleries uh, and with the intention of getting a show in the West End or Shoreditch and then eventually I intend to get, uh, get it to New York or Paris or something. Wonderful, so that's the yeah. Next, next project. Great. That's that's a really good concept as well. I do like some philosophical debate. <laughs> well, yes, we we thought you know it's a conceptual work of art, but actually made up of real paintings, which is kind yeah. of unusual. Which becomes something else and new. Yeah. But the question arises. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's, that's something to look for. It's a lot of work and interesting. So that's fascinating. Yeah. No, if you're doing anything like that, you know um, when and how, and we can do some preliminary work and promote it so that's great great thank you. thank you well i'm looking forward to seeing you soon and um particularly looking for phillips and philip and uh, i recommend that to everybody else that's watching hope you've enjoyed listening and meeting simon i think it's um intriguing now so looking at the picture in the background i'm sure you all want to rush out and find out more about him so <laughs> um, some of your well, details would be below in the comments etc and um yeah, thank you very much, Simon. Well, thank you, Victoria. It's been, been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Good. Nice to meet you. Okay, bye-bye, everyone. See you soon. Bye.